Fox is an honor on behalf of the Chautauqua Sports Hall of Fame, which is made up of the supporting uh, the uh, sports in the Chautauqua County who have created the Hall of Fame. And Nelly Fox's name is talked about many, many times in our meetings and in our programs. But the history of baseball in Jamestown and the photographic history of uh, professional baseball in Jamestown is a copy of a picture taken from center field. I, uh, the, the Post Journal and it shows a man standing in center field by the name of Nellie Fox, a thing that you'll be interested in and has become a friend of yours from those days, standing on the pitcher's mound is a guy sitting in the back of the room of Lyle Parkers. So it's on this day that we would like to present to you a copy of this photograph which says from, from Jamestown to Cooperstown, presented to Mrs. Nellie Fox, so August 19, 1998. Chautauqua Sports Hall of Fame. So on behalf of the Chautauqua Sports Hall of Fame and all of the people of this community, and it's uh, just an honor for us that this will hang in your home. Thank you. Kelly was the premier American League second baseman in the 1950s. He was the Lee Willie Keeler of his time. Four times he led the league in base hits. He was extremely hard to strike out. During the 1958 season, he went a record 98 consecutive games without a whip. The most times he ever struck out in a season was 18, while coming to bat no fewer than 600 times during the period 1951 to 1962. I think I struck out 18 times in my first four games. <laughs> Whitey Ford once said, Nelly was the toughest out for me. In 12 years, I struck him out once, and I think the umpire blew the call. Lyle, <laughs> well, you weren't the umpire, were you? <laughs> <laughs> Nelly was the American League MVP in 1959, and as you remember, those go-go socks of that year. Uh, he was deemed the mighty Adam, had 2,663 hits, of which this is incredible. Try this again. Mighty Adam, he had 2,663 hits, of which 2,262 were singles. That's amazing. I only wish he could be here to enjoy a night like this and to share it with memories that you have here on James Town. I'm going to share my speech that I gave in Cooperstown. I'm sure some of you have heard it, but this isn't the actual copy, so some things may not be, but it's it's almost just the same. Of course, here I'll say good evening. Distinguished members, honored guests, ladies, gentlemen, family, friends, and baseball fans. It is a pleasure to be with you here this afternoon. As a beautiful bouquet of flowers can brighten our day, so can memories of time, time we have shared with special people about a bit shared with special people about a very special person we are honoring here today, a tribute to my late husband, Jacob Nelson Nelly Fox. I wish to thank Nelly's fans throughout the country who passionately believe Nelly deserved baseball's highest honor to be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. If Nelly were here today, I think he would probably say, why all this fuss? He wouldn't want the attention of being one of the best. As a matter of fact, I think he would rather go back to the mountains of Pennsylvania and hibernate. The little Pepper Pod, or little now, as he was known, loved the game, and just to play it at its highest level, the major league was his greatest dream come true. He played with all his heart and all his passion, and with every ounce of his being. That was the best way he could show his appreciation to all those who helped him learn the game that became his life. All of Nellie's dreams became a reality thanks to his mother and dad who took him to Frederick, Maryland at the age of 16, and Connie Mack who signed him to play with the Philadelphia Athletics. And I'll add there a short time he spent here in Jamestown with you folks. Nellie's biggest break came in 1950 when he was traded to Chicago White Sox. In 1959, with his choke up on the ball bat and his punching sing singles all over the place, it was that year that he won the most valuable player award in the American League. 
It is a great, with great appreciation that I remember his mentors, especially Coach Ray Berries. Ray was our pitching coach early in the 50s. And Ray called me after Nelly was voted into Cooperstown. And he said, in 1950, they wanted to send Nelly down. He said, you know, he was a small man. And he said, oh, hold on to this young man. You're not giving him a chance. They said, oh, OK, Ray, if you think he has something to hold on to and give him the opportunity. Well, Nelly proved himself. And we have Ray Berries to thank for that. Also thank the late manager, Paul Richards, the late Doc Kramer, and Jimmy Adair. Among others, it's a great honor to remember and thank the Chuck the Comiskey family, the Bill Beck, Bill Beck family, Nellie's loyal fans are the ones who kept his memory alive. They're the reason we're here today. Day after day, I hear from men and women of all ages who remember Nellie during his days with the Chicago White Sox. Their support has secured his well-earned place in the Hall of Fame, despite the fact that he, our number two, has been in the heaven ball players for 21 years. I am thrilled to think that now his name will be enshrined along the side of such great ball greats as Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, Mickey Mantle, and all the baseball greats in the Hall of Fame. I also want to recognize three gentlemen all trying here today who brought many thrills and much joy to now his career. First, Ted Williams and Joe Morgan. Joe always thanked Nellie for taking time to help a rookie who was trying to take his job. And I, if you ever hear little Joe, you know, he always said, now he's probably not chicken left. You guys <laughs> probably know more about that than what I do. <laughs> and also, Nellie's double play partner, Louie Aparicio. And Louie was there for that day. You know, we've waited a long time for this day. One thing's certain now that I'm here, I'm not going to spend time talking about his great baseball career. The records speak for themselves. Besides, I think everyone here knows that side of the story. Now he was a down-to-earth person. He made everyone he, meet, he met feel comfortable. He never acted as if he were better than anyone else. In fact, each year, up until the time he died, you could see him at the local baseball games rooting for the hometown teams. Every winter, he would go hunting and bowling with the same friends he had known from boyhood. I'm extremely grateful for those who associated with this day. A special thanks to the Records Committee for making Nellie's induction a reality. I wish to thank the Nellie Fox Association for Chambersburg, the lobbying of the Nellie Fox Society in Chicago, my family, my dear friends, and Nellie's fans in Franklin County and the Go Go White Sox in Chicago. In addition, many thanks to Bill Pierce, his longtime roommate, teammate, and a good friend. And I hope that Bill will be in call with Nelly someday. My heartfelt thanks also goes to special friends Jim Landis, Joe Morgan, and all the many other ball players and their wives for the wonderful support they provided me throughout the years. A sincere appreciation to our two daughters. Bonnie and Tracy. They are also with me here tonight, as they were that day. Without their support, I wouldn't be here today. Nellie was a very loving father and husband. In closing, I would like to leave you with one thought. Every generation has its superstars who give their fans <coughs> thrills and cheers in the park. Nellie Fox, however, added another dimension to the game. He gave it his heart and soul. Today's stars may break Nellie's record, but they can't break Nellie's record of heart and soul. <coughs> heart and soul have made baseball the game we all know and love. Nellie Fox gave it his best. I hope today's players will learn something from the story of one of the men we are honoring here today. Since baseball has given them so much, they owe it something in return. They owe it their very best. Thank you.